Welcome back. I'm going to try today to beat another two or more of the lower rated bots on chess.com. We're going to start with Santiago, who is rated 850 and is from Chile. Uh, but first, uh, let me introduce to you, you see the new module here on my screen. As you can see, my peak rating is now 1260, which was a week or so ago, and I've since dropped back to 1238. I'm trying to keep it above 1200 and also aiming, of course, for 1300 or higher. I'll try to update it and see how this works. Uh, let's start playing the bots. Okay, we're going to start again, as I said, with Santiago. We're going to choose, let the computer choose the color. And it's given me white again. He says, buenos dias. Go easy on me. I'm just learning. All right, well, let's start with d4. He likes that move and responds with d5, which is perfectly natural. Knight to f3. Knight to f6. This is the queen's pawn opening symmetrical variation. Um, I think here we can play c4 and see what happens. Now we have transposed into the Queen's Gambit declined, according to the opening book that you see up there underneath Santiago's picture. Um, I think we can go ahead and get this bishop out here. Maybe. All right. And we can't quite yet take the full center because that knight is there. So let's put this knight here. And, uh, okay, this pawn is protected by my f3 knight, and if I play e4, that pawn will be protected by my c3 knight, at least until this bishop comes down here. So I'm going to play a3 now to prevent that bishop from coming down there. Okay, now we will play e4, and both of those center pawns will be protected which, if I understand it right, is one of the ideas behind the Queen's Gambit is to deflect one of their center pawns so that we can get a full center. But I normally don't play the Queen's Gambit. I normally attempt at least to play the London variation. So I just, that's about all I know. I think I can just take it back here. Um, I don't know the downside to that. And I also don't see that my opponent has made any mistakes or blunders just yet. Okay. Um, I think I should castle now. We've completed our development and we've followed, as far as I can tell, all the opening principles such as occupying and controlling the center. Um, we've developed all of our pieces except our rooks and queen and they're on pretty decent squares where they exercise control over center squares and center adjacent squares and um, perhaps the bishops aren't perfectly placed that's just where they ended up at this point uh, they might be better there I really don't know but getting the king to safety is a big part of the opening as well and I I've been trying to remind myself to castle before move 10 so we met that goal the queen has gone over there I don't know if that's a good move or not I suppose it's preparing to push b5 and the queen is getting behind that because right now b5 only has one defender but if the queen is back there then b5 has two defenders I, possibly um, I also don't know about pushing these pawns just yet I don't know if it's time to break open the center yet or not I do know if I push this pawn uh, this knight can just go in there, maybe? No, my knight's guarding that square. What if I push this pawn? That knight, I'm also guarding that square, but it could go here where it's guarded by a pawn. But I'm hitting that square twice. Maybe it is time to push one of these pawns. Um, or should I, should I get a rook into the game first? One of these rooks on open files? I'm really not sure. Also, sometimes here, uh, later in the evaluation, the computer will be suggesting to, for my queen to get on one of these two squares. Um, I 
And I don't know which of these, if I did, if it is time to push a pawn, I don't know which one is better. I know, let's see, if I push this one, where can that knight go? Not there, because I take it. Ah, but the bishop's guarding that square, and then the bishop gets over here. But still, that's a knight, knight for a pawn, so I don't think it would go there. Where would that knight go if I pushed this pawn? If it went here, I could just take it with either a knight or a bishop. If it went in here, I could take it with a knight. I, uh, but I'm I mostly expect this pawn to recapture. If I play d5, in which case, I could recapture with my e pawn, and then I'm the only one with a center pawn, and I would still be threatening that knight. I'm gonna try. Okay. As usual, the bot has uh, blundered this time within the first 10 moves. I think I played an even lower rated bot, like one of the 550 bots that made it much longer than that without an obvious blunder. That's an obvious blunder, I think, because it just gives up the knight, um, which I will now capture. Okay, and then, then that's another mistake because it's given up the bishop. In both cases, the, the pieces could have retreated to the back. Um, I don't think there's anything better than just taking the bishop now. So that's what I'm going to do. Let's just take the bishop. And again, the opponent is, is failing to play correctly here. Um, at least I'm pretty sure their best move would have been to take that pawn. I don't know. Maybe it's best for them to put a rook there and challenge my queen. But we've got to deal with this right now. Is it better to put the bishop back in the center, protect, helping protect this pawn, or is it better to retract the bishop back here where it guards this long diagonal and continues to point at the king? I don't know. I'm going to choose that one. That way, these pawns are much less likely to move or, or to be able to move because of this guarding the long diagonal. Okay, the queen has gotten off the back rank which doesn't seem like a great idea. I can't promote right now because there are still two enemy pieces guarding my promotion square, so I'm not really thinking about that. I'm trying to figure out what Santiago is up to, if anything. Now might be the time to... Let's see, what happens if I play this pawn? Well, now that knight can go here. Uh, it can't take the pawn right now because my queen is guarding it. The queen is guarding my d pawn, but it could go here once I move that pawn. Let's see, how would that work out? If it went there and I captured it and they captured back, I could capture back, but then they would capture, oh wait, I have a bishop first. So yeah, if they went there, I would capture back. If they captured back, I would get get it with my bishop. So let's do that. I think any... No, 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 no. Watch this. It could go here. And then they would take it. Now, ah, that wouldn't be horrible. It's a night trade and I'm up material. Let's do it. It didn't move at all. Okay. I was, I was overthinking that. Clearly, these bots are not interested in um, defending their pieces. So, in fact, I'm surprised that bishop took that pawn. But, <clears throat> even though we are up material now, we're up three minor pieces. We're down one pawn, and I'm still not sure exactly how to go about this. They still have two pieces guarding the d8 promotion square, so I can't yet... Uh, move this pawn forward. I mean, I probably could, and the bot might miss it, but let's let's not gamble on that. I think it might be time to move the rooks out on some of these open or semi-open files. I, I think let's put this rook here on a semi-open file. Okay, now they have moved the rook here, but now they can't take it, or they shouldn't, because they don't have another piece guarding it. Remember, they used to have a knight here that was also hitting that pawn. And at that point, I thought they could do this, and it would be dangerous for me. But now that that knight's gone, I'm not worried 
about this so much. I would like to get my queen off of this so I can put a rook there. But I don't want to put my queen here just yet because then the rook would take the pawn. And I don't want to put my queen on any dark squares because they still have a dark square bishop. So I'm going to put my queen on this, on d3, with the idea of putting my rook behind it and then getting my queen off of that file, perhaps to here. Okay, now we have a rook there on this pawn and we're going to get our queen off of that diagonal, but that looks dangerous because that's gonna block off this bishop. You know what? Why don't I put this bishop here and threaten checkmate? And then if they do move the pawn, I can just checkmate. If they do something else, then I can move the queen as I planned. So let's do this. Okay, they did block off the checkmate. I think most of the bots are pretty well programmed to take care of that. And then now, as I planned, I'm going to get my queen off of that dangerous uh, spot right there. I think here would be good. Yeah, but now the rook can take because now the queen is guarding that spot too. I, I'm not sure what else I can do about it. I think if the rook takes, I will just take it. So I'm going to go here as I had planned. Yeah, and I think if I take and the queen takes, then I get I win a tempo by being able to move my C rook over. So let's do that. Okay, now I can move the C rook over. The queen has to go somewhere, but it didn't. Okay, that makes this a lot easier. Uh, a lot, lot easier. As we know, once the queen is gone, it's much easier to clean up. But I still have to be careful. I still want to be very careful um, about where I move. I was thinking about going here to threaten that bishop, but then this pawn, it gets taken. But you know what? My queen is guarding that pawn, so I'm not worried about that. Let's see where the bishop goes. Okay, I was going to say, I think I'm guarding all of the squares along this diagonal. So it went back there. Which... Which frees up this diagonal. How best to get my queen to that diagonal? Should I play this pawn, intending to bring the queen this way for check? Or should I move the knight, intending to bring the king, the queen here? I think the second one is better. I want to put my knight... Where do I want to put my knight? Maybe here? And then I can bring my queen up? No, because if I put it here, the, uh, the bishop can take it. But if the bishop takes it, I'll just take back. What if the pawn moves? Oh, the pawn can't move. The pawn is pinned because that would be check. So I'm going to try that. Again, with the idea of putting my queen here. Well, now I don't have to put my queen there because my bishop is now lined up with the king. So now all I have to do is move my knight, which I will do. And now I will win the bishop with a discovered check from my rook. And then I will check here. And that's me. Oh, wow. Okay. It was a little tough at first. I wasn't exactly sure to proceed, but we checkmated... In 29 moves, I am going to run the game review just to see if I made any ma uh, blunders or mistakes. Wow, look at that. The game review says I did not have any blunders or mistakes, and I played with 92.9% accuracy. Only one move I had was inaccurate. I did not have any great or brilliant moves, but I did 13 best ones. Uh, just a real quick run through. Okay, we played book moves out to there. It says I've played the Queen's Gambit declined 60 times. Pretty sure that's not true. If you ever do click on these, you'll find, um, if you have a paid account, you can actually look at your opening books and uh, it will show that, no, you didn't actually play it that many times. Sometimes it'll be like twice. I, we, I have no idea where those wrong numbers come from. Okay, that was my inaccuracy when I was trying to prevent a piece from coming to B4. Okay. That actually gave the opponent a very slight advantage. So what should I have played at that point? Was that where I should have played e4? 
It's thinking um, probably not then if it took that long to figure it out. Oh, it says that was good. You revealed an attack on your opponent's piece. Well, yeah, I got out of the way of the bishop. That's one of the whole reasons for moving that pawn. Okay, but that wasn't the best. What was the best move? It was to play e3. Okay, well, the computer says that e3 would have been best in that position. Okay. Well, now we know. Sometimes it wants e4, sometimes it wants e3. And the rest of the game, the opponent made several mistakes. Well, a few mistakes. Okay. It, uh, it actually says Santiago did not make any blunders, but did play four mistakes. Okay, let's go on to the next bot. Okay, the next bot is Karim. It rated also 850 from Egypt, according to hovering over the flag. I do not recognize flags from all over the world, but that one says Egypt. And again, we got white despite choosing random. So again, we will play with D4. Okay, this is the Dutch defense. In a previous video, I saw that and thought, what in the world? But it's the Dutch defense. Okay. Um, I think what I played against that in the previous video was putting my bishop here. That's weird. The idea, I think, of putting the bishop here is trying to draw this pawn out, and then you can draw the other pawn out and not worry about it because you can capture here. But now you cannot do that because the rook is guarding that pawn. So maybe that's good. I don't know. I think we can keep the bishop there for a little while, but I don't know if I should anchor it in with a h pawn. One reason for putting it here, I know, is to keep the knight from coming. And that's called the Hopton attack. When I played that against the other bot, it just did some random pawn move on the other side. Okay. I suppose I should continue with my development. But I'm not sure exactly which way to go with the development. But I don't know if I should play c4 or c3 and then put this knight here. But I think I'm going to go ahead and get this bishop out and then castle. Or should I castle over there since all these pawns are already coming on the king side? I don't know. Maybe let's do that. Okay, <laughs> Kareem has blundered on move three because that just gives up the queen. Um, as a beginner, sometimes we don't spot these moves. Uh, for example, the other day, my son had a position where the queen diagonal was already open and moved his bishop there where the queen could just take it. And the opponent didn't see it. They blocked it with the knight. So I know that uh, beginner level players often just miss those, but I, I mean... I had seen the bishop pointing at this pawn the whole time, so... And hopefully now we will make quick work of Kareem, who inexplicably had a huge blunder long earlier than many of the lower-rated bots. All right, well, now I am going to... I think I'm going to challenge that f-pawn. If it takes, I can take back with my knight. It did not take, but it pinned my knight. Okay. Well, then, what if I just edge that forward a little bit? Or should I defend the knight? I don't know. I am planning on castling this way. And, and I'm not worried about dark square diagonal checks on this side. So, let's defend the knight first. Or should we know what? In order to castle queen side, I need to get that queen off the back rank anyway. So let's just do that now, which defends the knight and prepares to castle. Okay. That's another attacker on that pawn. Okay. I mean, I can do this, right? But then, oh wait, then the pawn takes and I take and the knight takes my bishop. So I think I should defend with a pawn. Maybe. Not sure. Okay. 
Now I'm prepared to castle. There we go. All right. I think I just want to take that with on passant. Not because you always have to take with on passant when they uh, send a pawn rushing past you, but I think if I don't, it's going to make this a lot slower game to win because the center is going to get locked up with all our pawns facing each other. That's why I want to take it this way. And uh, open the center just a little bit. Okay. I think we're in pretty good position, pretty good situation. Um, I would like to have a dark squared bishop right now due to that rook being exposed. But maybe I can get that pawn out of there and then, no, the knight's guarding it too. Ah, wow. I need a little uh, earpiece so one of you higher rated players can tell me, you missed it, you missed it. Look at the knight, look at the knight. But, 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 but. Let's get the bishop out. It's good to develop pieces because this rook can't move until we get these other pieces off the back rank. Where is that going? Is it trying to reroute around here? Oh, wow. You know what? Before that, before that moved, I could have checked right here and won that pawn. But now I can't. I bet if I run, when I run the game review, it's going to say I should have done that. Possibly. I'm going to continue by getting this knight out. I'm not worried right now about the queen being trapped because uh, I could just take that. Also, my queen can drop back if I need to. But I do need to get my king off the diagonal. Yeah, I need to get my uh, king off the same diagonal as my queen. That was a mistake on my part, leaving my king and queen lined up like that. Okay. Now they're not on the same diagonal anymore, so if there is a future bishop move here, I can just move this. I want to get a rook to an open file, semi-open file, but I think first I want to get a knight centralized, like right here. Okay, this king is trying to castle itself on the other side. But in the meantime is basically, well, I mean, the knight can always hop out, but the, the rook is basically trapped now and becomes a non-entity in the game. And also this king move, I was going to say it undefended the bishop, but the knight's still guarding the bishop. But nothing's guarding the rook right now. If I could get, if I could get their F pawn to move somehow like forward then I would have the rook but I can't entice the pawn to move forward can I I think my king is fairly safe these bishops are pointing at the wall whoops at the side of the board not at my pawns so I'm not too worried about them this rook really can't go anywhere. What can I do though? How, how do I break into this position? Maybe bringing the knight back here and then up there, which threatens the rook, threatens an infiltration. I, I really don't know. You know what? First, I'm going to move these pawns a little bit. Okay, that bishop has gone backward. What's going on here? Um, this pawn's now undefended. Okay, well, I'll take it. And now this pawn's undefended. I'm willing to give up my knight for this. Okay, and now let's put a rook on the open file as I had talked about the whole time. Not sure about that move, but I think I should go ahead and take this now, and then we'll just clean up with Karim. 
Um, we'll just take as many pieces as he gives us. This is not going to be mate because the king has made itself an escape square. Can we block that escape square? Not immediately, but we can pretty quickly do it if this pawn were out of the way. But the king has just ceased to, to defend this knight, so let's go ahead and take the knight. And then if the king comes back, we'll take this pawn. The king did not take, come back. So let's take this pawn, which leaves the knight undefended. And the knight has nowhere to go because all of its escape squares were covered. So we can go ahead and take the knight. Make sure we're not stalemating. No, the rooks and pawn, the rook and pawns can move. Okay. Now that's mate. Okay. Because Kareem blocked his own escape square. <laughs> All right. Save that game. Let's look at the game review. Okay. That's a good thing I paused recording for that game review. It took more than two minutes. So, but it said again, I had no mistakes, no blunders, no inaccuracies. I mean, no missed wins, but one inaccuracy, just like the last game, but somehow the uh, percentage is lower. So let's start the review. Okay, that was my last book move. It says I've played the Dutch defense 14 times. Maybe. I don't remember facing it that many times. It, it doesn't seem to be very common at, at my level. And again, my level is right there on the board, on the screen, I mean. All right. Well, that was a great move. Well, of course it was great. I took their coin. <laughs> that shouldn't be classified as great. Uh, it was fairly obvious. But anyway. Uh, um, yes, we were helped greatly by Kareem's early blunder. Oh, castling was inaccurate. You overlooked an opportunity to threaten winning material. Okay. How was I going to threaten winning? Oh, yeah. this the, What I noticed earlier... Was it that? Because, yeah, it was that. Okay, I didn't notice that until about two moves or maybe more later that I could have done that. By the time I noticed it, their bishop was already back here. And uh, it says, now you're now threatening to win material. I guess. Um, how are they going to block that check? This way? Or I guess they, if they block with the bishop, then I win the pawn? At which point I'm threatening the knight or if they blocked with the knight then after i take the pawn i am threatening the rook okay yeah i noticed that a few moves later once it was too late so that makes sense but that was my only inaccuracy was castling when i should have uh been noticing that extra diagonal of the queen okay well we made short work of uh of kareem and santiago thank you for watching um, I think the the bots after this, I think I already have videos about them. But if not, I, I'll go ahead and, and make new ones. See you next time.